On behalf of South Nairobi Kajado Field, the Central Kenya Conference, and East Nairobi Field, to extend a hand of welcome for those who are baptized today. Thank you so much. We want to thank God for the numbers of members who have been baptized here in New Life and all over the world. Of course, we are receiving reports that uh, the baptism is still ongoing. And we want to thank God because uh, we have set pastors there who are also accepting people who are coming now and saying that we were late. So the baptism is going on and we are going to receive the statistics from our leaders. What we want to say is that we really want to thank God and on behalf of the three entities that are around here, on behalf of the World Church, we want to extend a hearty welcome to all members who have been baptized today. Yes. And I see by show of hands how many say that uh, we welcome them to our membership. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much. Those yes. ones who are baptized by these hands, you are welcome. And you will be welcome officially in your local churches. It was not possible for us to bring them here. Of around 2,000 people is not possible. Therefore, feel welcome and God bless you. And the program continues. Thank you. And we want to request all members that assist us to nurture all those members who have been baptized. It will be exercised in futility if we don't nurture them, befriend them, walk with them. They are just babies in the faith. Let's walk with them. Let's support them. Let's call them. Let's encourage them to come to church. Let the happiness classes in the churches be active so that we can maintain them in the church. God bless us. Thank you so much. And not only here in this side, all those who are baptized in various places who are following this uh, uh, presentation is virtually wherever you are you are a part of this congregation you are welcome god thank bless you. you thank you good afternoon and welcome again to our secrets to wellness this is the last presentation and i want to inspire you to follow the natural laws that god has given us because god has given us principles for good health he has given us eight simple principles to achieve better health. And let's look at those. You know, this was written by the greatest, the greatest health educator of all time, Ellen White. And she says, pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power, these are the true remedies. Why does she say these are the true remedies, my friends? Because there are false ones out there, and we need to know what the true remedies are. And these laws of health, my friends, are simple. They take discipline, but they're simple, inexpensive, and they're available worldwide. It doesn't matter where we travel around the world, these principles work. But you know what the key is, my friends? The key is to practice them. The key is to practice them. You see, the Bible's ancient health principles are a universal prescription for wellness. So here is your prescription. And it's the prescription to kill, to actually uh, remedy these killer diseases of the 21st century. Now, the killer diseases are going around the world very rapidly. So how can we avoid these killer diseases of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, obesity, and all the killer diseases that we have today. Well, we can actually reduce and even reverse these, these diseases by a good diet and a good lifestyle. So good lifestyle practices, my friends, will make a difference. You know what? There are no shortcuts. There's no miracle strength pill. There just is not, my friends. It's a matter of making good good choices. You see, our daily choices may help or harm our health only a little, but when these choices become our habits over years and decades, the results become major. Someone says, oh, but I can smoke. It doesn't bother me. It's not going to affect me. 
or I can drink alcohol, or I can drink coffee, or I can even drink the caffeine and all these soda pops. I can do what I want. I can even, you know, be sedentary and not exercise, or I don't have to eat the foods that you've been talking about, or I don't even need to drink my water, and I don't need to exercise. But you know what? When we make these choices and they become our habits, and over years and decades, the results become major, my friends, because there's an old saying that says this, sell your health when you're young, and when you're old, you can't buy it back. So young people, follow God's laws of health while you're young, because it makes a difference in your life. Lifestyle choices play the key role in determining both the quality and the quantity, the length of our lives. But when people develop these diseases, then they want to seek a cure, right? And often, my friends, it is too late. Let me illustrate this way. There was a famous old monastery situated on the side of a cliff. And we've been up many of these monasteries, and just recently we were up one. And it overlooks the emerald blue waters of the Mediterranean. And a tourist wanted to visit this monastery. It's right on the side of a cliff. There's many of them. But there was one problem. The only way up was in an old wicker basket hoisted up by a rope. Now get the picture. You want to go up to the top. Now we walked up to the top, but when we got to the top, we saw this basket and we saw this rope and they wanted to uh, put the visitor in the basket. And when he got into the basket that was hoisted up by this rope, he had only one question. How often do you change the rope? And he said, oh, don't worry. We change it every time it breaks. Well, you know, we smile, we laugh, but my friends, the truth of the matter is many people wait until their health snaps. And then what happens? They frantically jump on the bandwagon of the latest health fad. They want the latest thing, and that sometimes doesn't work. So what's the difference between wisdom and knowledge is my question to you. Well, knowledge, my friends, has to do with acquiring information. You've been acquiring information every night. You acquire information when you're in elementary school and then high school and then college. So you acquire all this information. That's knowledge. But wisdom, my friends, is the ability to use and to apply that knowledge. The key, you see, my friends, to the secrets to wellness is to apply the knowledge that we have been getting, right? So I want you to apply these eight simple natural remedies because wisdom actually leads us to make the right choices. You see, because a healthy lifestyle actually takes a lot of discipline. It takes discipline to walk 30 minutes and even 45 or 60 minutes a day at least five times a week. And it even takes discipline to refuse that extra serving of your favorite food or to eat the right foods, the plant-based foods, and give up all those unclean animal foods and animal uh, foods in general. It takes discipline, but you'll be healthier. And it takes discipline to get out of your comfortable chair and go in the sunshine and fresh air. And it takes discipline also to go to bed on time, doesn't it? You see, my friends, right choices are critically important toward optimum wellness. And choice, my friends, is the first step toward improving our lifestyle. Positive choices bring about positive results. The lifestyle choices we make largely determine our health. And so it's never too late, never too late, whether you're young, you're middle-aged, or you're older, my friends, to begin making positive choices. It's never too late. It doesn't matter how old you are. Start today.
because we can be healthy by choice. The choice is yours, my friends, and the choice is mine, right? Yes. So why not begin making wise lifestyle choices today? So here are my teeny tips for you for making changes. Choose, my friends, to make positive steps to improve your health. Choose to take those positive steps and determine to be more conscious of following these eight laws of health that we've been learning. And take responsibility for your own health. No one else will take that responsibility. And make a few positive choices immediately. And then evaluate the specific areas of your life that need improvement. Where can I improve? How can I do better? And then set realistic goals for yourself. And then measure your progress. How am I doing? Am I doing better today than I did yesterday? Well, I want to do even better tomorrow. And then commit to achieving your goals. And I know that God will bless you. So here is your prescription for tonight. It is wellness. Follow the laws of wellness. Yes, get adequate amounts of water. A question has come up over and over. When should I drink my water? 30 minutes before meals and two hours after meals. And you will be healthy and get those two liters every day. Exercise every day. Love and trust in God. And have your lifestyle such where you are following these laws of health every day. And then nutrition and environment, the air and sunshine and sleep. All of these put together actually are the true remedies for health and wellness, my friends. It is the Adventist health message. This is the Adventist health message. And I know you can do it because Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's say it together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And Jesus says in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So may God bless you as you choose God's way because God's way is always the best way, my friends. God bless you. We love each of you all across Africa. And we are so thankful that we've been here because we have been blessed. God bless you.